Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I want to thank also His Excellency the Prime Minister for being here to respond to our questions. I would pose my questions. Our country, Ethiopia, to clear it from destructive forces. The government is engaged in law enforcement operations and for the leadership you gave and for the victory that we had, I would want to say congratulations to you, Prime Minister, and also to protect the sovereignty of the country. Our army, the pride of Ethiopia, uh, would want to pay my tributes with honor. Excellency, Prime Minister, our country has been suffering from terrorist acts of uh, TPLF uh, and the measures taken against those acts of uh, terrorism uh, is there and we recognize that we're in approval of that but I have the, for the following questions first. The uh, perpetrators uh, that engaged uh, to destroy the, the constitutional order and system of the country and engaged in lots of terrible crimes and attacking our military force and also sending criminal and terrorist uh, groups all over the country and a greedy, corrupt uh, TPLF, uh, just like ICIS and also the Nigerian uh, Boko Haram and uh, Somali Al-Shabaab. Why is it that we have not yet designated it as a terrorist organization? And secondly, the attack against our northern division of our army, the high of our military officials, high-ranking army officials, why is the case being handled by the high court? Why is it not being handled by a military, a special military court. And thirdly, uh, uh, in the past two years, uh, uh, there's been a lot of uh, uh, reform work in the army. A lot of work has been done to make it free of political influences. However, the, during the attack against the military, those involved were part of the military from the main office, even here in Ethiopia. So how successful has a, our reform work been in the army? And fourth, the traitor and banda TPLF uh, has been engaged with several acts of crimes, but the government uh, gave uh, peace chance and handled the case with a lot of patience. However, the patience of the government uh, they say, has given these uh, terrorist organization uh, time uh, to organize uh, to engage in such evil acts of attack. If you would elaborate, thank you. Honorable Oizoro Masarat Gitachao. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I want to thank His Excellency the Prime Minister who will be here to answer our questions. Excellency Prime Minister, the very, very fast campaign that we just engaged in, and I congratulate you for the victory, and also the Amhara Region Militia and our uh, army. We take pride in the victory, and I would read my question first. At the moment, uh, in Ethiopia, the traitors are engaged in lots of destruction and, and many civilians have died and uh, this has caused uh, severe psychological uh, pressure on the country. So our, our 
uh, and also they uh, attacked uh, our army forces that did not expect the attack in any way. They have killed many. Uh, so why, 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 what's the government doing to, to make sure that they face justice at a military court? And secondly, those uh, groups that want to dismantle the country and, act, uh, and engage in, in, in acts of genocide, uh, that these are TPR Leif and Onag Shane. And this has been very clear to everybody accordingly. Why have not uh, we yet designated it as a genocide organization? And how are we going to hold them legally accountable? And thirdly, the extremist uh, TPLF group, uh, the actions taken against it, uh, though, was very successful in a very small amount of time. But the rocket attacks uh, 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 against uh, uh, Bahada, Gondor and Eritrea, and this has continued. How are we going to stop these acts of violence? Thank you. Honorable Thomas Finn Meshesha. Thank you. I want to thank also the Prime Minister for being here to respond to our questions. I will read my question. Our country being engaged in a path of change and works have been made to disrupt uh, our efforts of development and, uh, and uh, evil forces are engaged in act of violence, forcing the government to take actions. Uh, however, these, uh, when the, the government's attention is focused on the northern part of Ethiopia, there could be other forces from within and uh, outside uh, that want to take at, uh, action against our uh, huge projects. Uh, how prepared are we to protect ourselves? Thank you, and uh, honorable Thank you, Honorable Speaker. First of all, for the attack against our northern division of army by internal traitors, for the work, for the uh, resolute uh, uh, leadership that you gave, uh, and also for the powerful victory that uh, we registered, I honor you for that. I pose my question, I read it first. In order to reverse uh, the development uh, activities that were engaged in, uh, various acts of violence uh, has been conducted by TPLF and its friends, uh, but it has not been successful. But recently, in various parts of Ethiopia, many civilians have been killed by Your Excellency Prime Minister. Uh, these destructive forces that operate uh, with uh, under TPLF uh, and also TPLF leaders uh, after going to Tigray, they engaged in all sorts of evil acts all around the country. And they were preparing themselves for a war, but should we have given them ample time to prepare for their evil acts? And secondly, the, the acts of violence that they were engaged in with dreams uh, to assume power come back to power and are engaged into all sorts of divisive uh, forces. And also the destructive uh, uh, 
media works that they're engaged in, uh, they, uh, we fear that it might cause di uh, disturbance uh, in our relationship uh, internationally. So what, what is being done to avert that? And thirdly, TPLF, in the name of democracy and uh, federalism, uh, it had hit themselves, uh, uh, posing itself uh, as uh, uh, working for the country, uh, but uh, but uh, but uh, the, the disguising itself under ethnic uh, organizations uh, has been engaged in uh, destructive uh, acts all over. This has been very clear. So accordingly, this uh, the government. Uh, why don't we designate it as a terrorist organization? Thank you. I would like to thank you for giving me the chance to respond to your questions. The questions raised are directly related to the situations we're in at the moment, but the, for the past two and a half years we have been on the journey of reform and it has been on several challenges. And I will also highlight on where we are right now. And I believe that's important. Most of the questions talk about the stance of the government saving the lives of citizens. And these are questions of livelihood as much as possible, if not everything I'll try to show you how it looked like from the beginning. First of all, in the past 27 years, the inhuman treatment that took place in the country and the thirst for democracy and good governance in our country is definitely not what I'll be covering because the House knows it very well, despite the fact that the people might from time to time forget what they've been into, and I'm sure they'll remember and I'll not talk much about that. One or two months after the reform would be the timeline where I'll begin my narration. As you may remember, two and a half years ago, a month or two before the reform, there were several conflicts, expropriations taking place in the country, and burying several bodies in one hole, suppressing and subjecting people to cruelty. It was widely observed. Following the reform, we have faced several challenges. The trend that has continued till day, the people who graduated from the same college are causing these acts. And we have to remember this background. Within that time, there were several complainings, warnings, and the tactic they used was to make the people worry, to arrest a lot of people all together, and to suppress the situation. For example, during the time of the celebration of Recha, the institution that existed to safeguard the country would print so many flags of opposing teams and make them carry it on the street and would arrest them and use it as a context. And other locations they will have, they will arrest a lot of people for carrying a flag that doesn't have the emblem. 
this affected the need for the people of the people for change the need for change it did not stop that need because of that right before the reform there were discussions and attempts for a coup that discussion for coup d'etat when it was heard by Prime Minister Halamaram de Salin said I'm here to serve there is no need for a coup d'etat if you think you don't need Haile Mariam, I'm ready to leave my chair at any time and said there is no need for it and discussed it with the relevant people and the rest of us were saying this is not a coup d'etat, this is a coup of a single person. How does a government coup itself? How do you coup your own intelligence? How do you wage a coup d'etat against yourself? There is no need for such discussions. It can easily be done. That was the discussion at the time. And from among them, there were individuals that did not support the issue. And the discussion of the coup d'etat was reversed. <laughs> and the discussion started on who the person will be succeeding in order to ensure the next person will be their favorite person there was a list of people on whom an active surveillance was done to see if they can be capable so behind our back us knowing they were surveilling us there was a car right outside of my gate following me to my office and it was there wherever I go not hidden but in public this was uh, also the same for other comrades there was no need to worry much. You don't need to spend fuel on us. There are several other matters that you need to worry about, not us. But it didn't stop there. There were more tensions. For instance, in Oromia office, the president's office and the office of Otibio, all the towers were surrounded by shotguns. There were potholes on our gates or our or the buildings around us were surrounded by surveillance. During the time, few persons sat and discussed there could be killings at any time. The struggle we started should not be interrupted we assumed as if we were killed, as if we were finished. We documented a video that said the government is oppressing us, is going to kill us, and so on. And we kept those videos with people close to us, and we told them to release the video as soon as if those things happen. It was clear that a danger could occur at any time. Following the surveillance, we did a discussion, we had a discussion with the rulers of EPRDF and they released an order for arrest. This was five, ten days before our election. There was an order to arrest. It was written. All this was intended towards removing the people I wanted and to put in place persons that look like government, but puppets, were anti this activity. And many were following the situation closely, and most of them were uh, futile. The Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, 
had the desire for reform and for the reform to be successful. Not only that, since there were people coming and going between the two groups, we were sending the information they want to hear, and we were also learning about what they were doing, and it gave us time to prepare. When we moved to the election, the first election and under the PRDF, for the first time in history, was directed towards brainwashing and changing the minds of people through evaluations. We were assembling a lot, but there was no fruit in those meetings. And on the day of the election, we were discussing on the criteria for election. As you might have heard, it was full of debate. It was nothing less than the war we're having at the moment. And the assembly of the junta was fighting from the side with a wide spread activity and at a time uh, around 10 p.m. they said we won the election and started celebrating. Before that, they said it's only in our dead body that these people will come to position. Everywhere you go, wherever they were dancing, after doing that, they faced an unprecedented loss, and those members of EPRDF that wanted change, reform, spearheaded the activities. EPRDF had a lot of discussions, debates, to just elect one person. When we met a year, in four months in Aasa, I mean, a person's perception won't change that quick. In 10 minutes, except for one person, the remaining 100% voted in just four months' time, that one voice was given to me. I voted for my friends. The remaining 100% voted. What does it mean? Three months prior to that, there was not the need for that kind of debate. Had that been necessary three months after that when there were voting, uh, they would not have given their voices. I would like to uh, make this a background for the House. The second one, after the reform, and after the reform, uh, leaders came to power, the special force was under oppression and wanted to do arresting surveillances and so on. And the people of Ethiopia were oppressed and had hatred. And there were oppositions at the time. And in that situation, if we did a reform in the country at that time, the way it was done before, we would have destroyed each other. Some were oppressed, others were privileged, and because the other group did not have weapons, they would have been killings in the people. So we said, let's have a reform. Let's not have conservative views. Let's avoid debates, unnecessary debates, and let's change the narrative. So we said, let's not say we'll destroy you because you cause damage. We said, the damage could be 
averted in two ways. One is vengeance, the other one is through giving a leeway. He said, let's give them, let, they say, let them say sorry. If, this, if we raise the problems of the past, they were subject to many cruelty that lost their fathers, their mothers. And there are so many people that left the country and died in the ocean fleeing the government. If we take vengeance, of course there would be mass death. So let's come to agreement, peace and love. The politics of hatred never helped us. Starting from zero is pulling Ethiopia backward. So we said, let this be it. And all the different sessions we had, we communicated the same to the people. And after saying that, the next action should be an all-inclusive government comprehensive one. When we say by all, each and every person should contribute a grain of sand. When we say for all, there should not be discrimination between who benefits and who don't honor and not. And when we say for all, we said so that everyone can benefit equitably. So this is what we wanted to develop. And when we raised the question, we said, you're preaching. This is just a preach. You cannot rule a country by preaching. Ruling a country, they said, should be saying what you say to the people and killing at the back. And they said, you cannot talk about love and rule a, rule a country. And they said, the government is weak in the end. Perhaps the government, a government is weak. A government is the coming together is not the individual's strengths, rather it's the strengths of institutions. And after developing an institution in a wrong way, of course, we can say the government is weak. A government that doesn't have institutions is weak, no matter what the individuals are. Therefore, on this track, in order to change the existing scenario, did not receive the commencement. The Honorable House, many politicians, media, started asking why hasn't the government taken actions immediately? Was it not possible to take actions at the time? There are questions like this raised from time to time. This issue has differences bef between want and action. We can always wish for something. We can dream. We can, we can do that. But undertaking it requires institutional capacity. The major political challenge we have as a country, both on the side of the ruling and the opposition and the individuals, is before we do something, we don't have analysis of power. One government, one party, in all its activities can only be a winner when it has sufficient knowledge-based, data-based power analysis. What's the power within the inside and in the outside? And if there are conflicts, what are the wins and losses? And these require analysis. Since we don't do that, a person will just rise up and say, I'll be a government. In order to be a government, you need to understand your enemies. You need to understand yourself and the capabilities of, of your enemy, identifying your capacity and how you can wear down your enemy. 
cannot just assemble and become a party in just six months and say you'll win. It's just a wish. That's why in the past 40 years we've had political parties that never succeeded, that never made it to power. So the power ranking analysis requires deep analysis. It will just be a wish otherwise. Moreover, we should need to also have situational analysis. The institution called government, what does it look like? What does oppositions look like as an institution? What do the neighboring countries look like? What kind of operations will be successful? We need to have such kind of situational, situational analysis. A person who understands it in that way will never ask the question that the actions are delayed. Why? As an individual, let alone my country, let alone the responsibility you give me, I am and uh, I was in a position where I was unable to protect myself and my family. When the day, the day you made me the prime minister uh, to make me serve the country, the Ministry of uh, Intelligence and three other people, were denied access to the palace. And I said, if you say these people are not fit, why do you even trust me? They said, it's only the uh, protection we give you that has to uh, prevail. The office I work in is in the hands of this intelligence security. They open and close the door whenever I walk in and out. I was even unaware if there was surveillance camera recording in my room. I was unable to do a counter surveillance to check my office. They will just open the door in the morning, allow me to go in the office and go out. I was unable to discuss using my phone. I couldn't call Mr. Demeka for a discussion and so on. My office was controlled. Moreover, my office in general was under the control of other uh, forces. Even the key to my house was controlled by these people. They opened the door and closed the door morning and night. This is the scenario I was in when you said, why did we not take actions? So I was unable to safeguard the safety of my family, let alone you. It didn't stop there. I was a member of an army, so I started thinking if there were ways where I can escape. I started looking around the compound. And I asked if I can look around the compound. They said, this is not usual for the prime minister to look around the compound. They said, you go to the office and to your house. And they said, when they said your house, it meant inside the house, not even in, 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 in the premise. I said, I'm not only a prime minister, I need to look around my compound. I need to see what's outside. This compound never had identified subsidy Kabale, but there were plastics, small houses around it, elderly children, and those type of people around it. So it was not clear whether this was a palace or just a random house. It was surrounded by normal people. And I started asking, what are the roles of these people? What are they doing here? It was never clear. There were toilets everywhere. There were cottages everywhere in the compound, as if it was on the street. No one lives in those houses. So it wasn't a house and office. But I was also under a very dangerous situation. 
And that's what I understood. So I had to look outside. There was a place where they stored ammunition on the one side. On the other, there were protections. On the other side, there was a garage that has a lot of people. And down there were a national intelligence office outside of um, the law, the constitution that has special forces. If I escape my office and my house, I can escape the compound. Even the compound is very difficult to leave. So the prime minister was basically stranded. In order to free myself from this cage, uh, honorable house, in order to fulfill the reforms you are requesting, the first discussion needs to be made with my family. And we said, well, this is prison. We can't go out of here and rule a country. So we decided and sent family back home. And considering that there would be killings, suppressions, or anything, uh, we started the first uh, activities. Not as a prime minister, but as an individual in prison, but who can appear in public on the media. You're asking this person to create a reform. And our comrade, including the Deputy Prime Minister, we started analyzing our situation. We said we can write and raise ideas, but if we start discussions with others, it will only reverse our ideas and actions. And we said, how can we make the change and reform people are asking for? And we said, let's follow a sandwich approach. Let's do away with the conventional uh, assembly, the council. And this we said, the central administration should follow this approach and we should communicate with the public and try to understand what they want. I'm expediating the story. We said, let's communicate with the people, let's sell our ideas to the people, and let's make the public the guardian, and let's make sure the people will stand on the side of the reform, and let's also share our ideas. After saying that, we made the first trip to Somali region. The reason is because the current danger was first designed in Somalia. More than 30,000 trained, armed special forces existed in that region with the idea to dismantle the country. Moreover, there were several displacements and killings before that, a month before that. So we said, do we need to heal that? When we asked to go to Somali region, the intelligence had said, you can't go. You can't go to Somali region. And I said, why? He said, Al-Shabaab is designing to kill you, so you cannot go to uh, Somali region. First of all, I have experience on how information is fabricated and also this intelligence only had the responsibility of giving me information that helps me make decisions, not make decisions for me. And whenever I asked why, he said the justification is Al-Shabaab will kill you. And my response were two. One, please give me information that helps making decision. And two, you did the major task. Your task is to identify there is a group that wants to kill me. So I said, protect me from these killers and let me do my job. 
Had you not known about it, it would have made my life very difficult. But now you know it, so protect me and I'll do my job. Then I went to Somalia region. We've had great time, we've discussed with the people. Coming back from Somalia region, the second trip was to Makale. The people of Tigray at the time, given the condition, were uh, affected like any other member of the people. So we approached the people uh, and to alleviate any danger, we started discussing with their language. So we went to Makale, Tigray region, sorry. I was never told there is a special force. I went there, we had a discussion, and the power of the junta was surprised, shocked. The people of Tigray received us very well, and the youths were in need of reform, so they supported. That's when they understood the approach, the sandwich approach. And after Makale, they said, we need to stop this. If it continues like this, they will isolate the people and it will be very dangerous. They have had their own discussions. My next trip was to Ambo. They said I can't go to Ambo because Oneg will kill me. OLF will kill me. A month before that, I've, I was there to discuss with the people that we're going to win, that we're going to change, we're going to have a reform. And they said, there is a force that will kill you, so don't go to OLF. I understood then. I said, it's not OLF or Al Shabab that will kill me. I said, it's the group within that will kill me. So we added additional forces and went to Ambo security. We've had fruitful time in Ambo, and then we went to, we decided to go to uh, Gondar and uh, Bahardar. There was a Welkait committee, uh, there were problems at the time, and they said, they plan to kill you, we have their plan, and they said, you can't go. Amara region administration were told to do the underlying activities, and we went. It wasn't only talking to people, the Welkite Committee and the Command Committee. We sat them on a table and have had discussions. And from the discussion, our disagreement between us and the intelligence grew. And they said, if you're having discussions with Welkite, you will not be having discussions with us. Following that, in the north, in the east, west, and also to some extent, we've had discussions in Addis Ababa as well. So we started taking expedited decisions and actions. We started showing the people what they wanted to see. As you may remember, we were giving emergency news, breaking news saying we have released someone, we have done this and that. One is uh, political prisoners that were then released. After they were released, they conducted a meeting in Addis Ababa and they held the flag without uh, the, the star. They were thrown back to jail again not even a week in freedom, they were thrown back to prison and I said, now you should let them go, it's not right. If we arrest people for you know, taking a flag without a, a star, was, there was a lot of controversy, but uh, they were freed. And then uh, concerning Ato Andar Kajo Sergei, there was a request for his release, it was again very hot controversy involved. He said he's a dangerous person, uh, uh, he's uh, facing trial, uh, death penalty. There was a very strong resistance. Uh, up until this moment, uh, nobody knows who's the prime minister. The prime minister orders, uh, uh, issues an order, somebody throws it away. So we involved uh, the Attorney General's office, 
in this manner, in this matter, sorry. So we made sure that Andarkar chose Sergei was released, and when that was done, it moved, the situation got worse. It's either you or us. Very hard controversy and conflict, actually. So I said we cannot continue like this, or leaders of uh, security. Uh, uh, governments uh, with their own army, media. Uh, you cannot continue together. Uh, I decided that they need to be removed. So we decided to study the situation. Should we uh, take measures on the defense force only or on the security apparatus only? W if we do that on these two entities, uh, how dangerous would it be when we studied the situation in some countries? The security head uh, and, uh, and our, our army head were removed and there was a lot of destruction in some African countries. We had to learn from history and devise a way to avert destruction. And so when we were forced to do is to remove uh, um, governments under a government and that the institutions should remain at an, inst an institutional level. What I want to make clear here is uh, that at the moment, uh, General Samora, the army commander-in-chief, uh, had done his, his level the best to avert the coup d'etat even after the change. He was very supportive and has uh, a spirit of support. It's very clear, something we cannot deny. Though he was in support, we had, we had to change the situation, so we had to honorably uh, bring him to retirement. So we, we removed the commander-in-chief uh, and also the security head. The, the response was different. Uh, General Samora's response was much better. His spirit of cooperation was there, but the institution had to go through reform, so we had to take measure after we took this action. The situation got worse and very clear, so the security head he, they, they stole various armaments uh, and fled to Makale. What I want this parliament to understand is we don't even know what he took from that office. How, how much of the armament is stolen, we don't know because the security entity uh, had become a family entity and not really an organizational per se, what purchases have been done, where are the, the stored, nobody knows, no information whatsoever. When I was told that Al-Shabaab would kill, yeah, there were uh, information sent to me, but I never read, I never open postal offices, I never do that because it could prove to be costly, dangerous. The institution cannot even report, uh, the security apparatus cannot even report what its own head did. So lastly, as you know, during the parade in support in Addis, there was an attempt on my life when what that was done. The police, the defense, the defense force and the security all were there a very, very close attempt on my life that could have proven costly. It's also when we made that search, we find out that uh, uh, bombs, armament was stolen from the security office. Even then, we didn't know the exact type of armaments, the number of armaments that were stolen. Sto uh, armaments uh, bought from Israel, uh, silencing with unsilencing apparatus that could be uh, used in assassin assassinations. From that time onwards, uh, 
this uh, individual that used to be head of uh, security office. We began conversing with the Tigran uh, government, uh, asking them uh, uh, at least, uh, at least uh, he should return the armaments uh, that he stole. And they, as you know, they have their own media, this uh, individual, the Abai media. They're using government funds, of course. And even in the, in, in the palace, he has his own soldiers. Uh, if I want to travel outside, I don't know what can happen on the air. I cannot trust the airplane. So if I do not have a liberty for myself, what will I do? This must be clearly understood by the parliament. It was not something easy things that I have not mentioned yet. The reason why I'm disclosing it, that we all to know exactly what we went through, and everybody, including Ethiopian people, have a, a right to know history. So we said, well, let's conduct SSR, Security Service Reform. So we started with INSA, Security Office, the Police, the Defense Force, the Financial Intelligence, were included in the reform process. We attempted on that. When we did that, the security apparatuses, they are not even existent. They are just family organizations uh, incapable. Uh, family members are gathered up in there. So it had to be literally demolished and redone. When we look at uh, the defense force, uh, doing the same would be of a problematic, so we wanted to uh, uh, gather as much data as possible to have a, a, a closer understanding, and uh, the results indicated that the Defense Force, uh, it was very difficult to, to change the Defense Force within, within the coming five years. For instance, in the Defense Force, the four star full generals uh, from Tigray region, as they constitute 60%, and from the entire other nation, it's 40%. These are the four star generals. Going one step lower, major generals, the, that's lieutenant generals, the numbers are smaller, 50% of them were from Tigray region. One step lower, major generals, 45% from Tigray. Brigadier generals, 40% from one place. Colonels, 58% from one region. Lieutenant Colonel, 66% from one region. One step lower, 53%. What does this mean? If I change the general, the, the colonel, and then the, 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 the lower rank, so to bring a balanced army in the coming 10 years, it was quite impossible. From uh, general to lower ranks, 55% are from Tigray re uh, region. Uh, yeah, among the generals, okay, it could be because of experience, but lieutenant, lieutenant colonel, captain, 20 years is enough in an in army career. In 20 years, he can become a, a, a captain, a colonel, and there's no ju justification that would uh, prevent that. So, but the work done, but uh, even now, even five years, in ten years, we could not think of uh, a reform because potential uh, uh, leadership is expected to come out of a certain region. This will not benefit Tigray, it will not benefit the Ethiopia. Tigray, as per the number of uh, its population, must uh, of necessity participate in defense forces, must protect its country be Tigray or Oromia or Baamara or Beni Shangul to, to get, uh, to get a, a bigger share would create the problem that we're facing now. It's not uh, beneficial at all. So I just talked of, of high-ranking officials with ranks. 
when we look at the uh, positions of authority, like in um, a defense headquarter, like divisions uh, of people uh, of, uh, of uh, leadership, 80% of them are from Tigray region. The, the, the first scenario was 55%. But those in position in offices, 80% of them, the staff in the headquarters, 80% from Tigray region. What does it mean? He knows what the purchasing, training, communication, everything is controlled by people that come from one region. Let's go a bit lower level from defense forces. There are uh, other forces, the divisions, you can say. The, the divisions that Ethiopia had, the leaders, 100% were from Tigray. Deputy uh, leader, 100% from, from Tigray in all divisions. Not only this, like in the northern and east, it could be uh, Amhara, like in logistics. But in, in the northern, the, the commander, deputy commander, logistics, administrator, all the four members of the committee are from Tigray. Why the north uh, division? I would elaborate later. This is a division. Let's, let's go uh, even a step uh, lower. Uh, like subdivisions uh, that are mechanized uh, and uh, uh, are, um, the soldiers, 100% mechanized uh, subdivisions, 100% are Tigrans. Like the foot soldiers, 80% leaders are from T Tigray region. So they, they don't, they don't actually need just count number of generals. We're going a step lower, Make mechanized brigades, 85% are from Tigray, foot soldiers, 80% from Tigray. Look at it from brigade up to the defense forces, it does not involve uh, people from other regions. If we maybe say, let's look at the training uh, department in the 80% uh, of it, uh, are uh, Tigrayans. So if we bring in new people because the trainers are from them, it could be problematic. So everybody needs to know of these facts that this should not repeat in the future. It's true professionalism must be taken into account because it's not a parliament. It's, uh, they're constituting from every uh, ethnic group may not be a must, but uh, our army must have a representative picture, and this is constitutional. The constitution makes it mandatory. We have to build an army that looks like the country. I, uh, let's now look at the entire army, the strategic policies, the directives, the training manuals. We gather these and began to look at it. I don't need to be a general and nobody needs to be a commander. The army was built, the red book, 100%, is against the constitution, blatantly. The, the book says you, you protect the party. If uh, uh, revolutionary democracy is touched, stand up and fight. So all this idea of democracy in election is a farce. If there is no federal, no revolutionary democracy, you cannot see the Ethiopia that you want to see. They say the, the foundation of Ethiopia is the ideology of the party. So it's only when that ideology and that party exists that Ethiopia exists. So even if have, uh, even we have representatives from other uh, um, ethnic backgrounds, it's quite useless because of the prevailing ideology. So the partisanship of the army, we found it to be very dangerous. I was very clear understanding, but uh, trying to do something about it was something else. For instance, in Sidama, uh, uh, 
region when Olaitas were killed, the commander there is the general that uh, assisted the destruction uh, at the northern division standing from uh, the headquarter. Our Elaita and Sidamas do not kill each other. They have lived there for centuries. But it's the hierarchy, the apparatus. It has uh, money, it has a mission. It incites violence, it creates the uh, uh, killing of one another in, and at the same time, um, it's that organ that is supposedly to uh, enforce the law. In Ethiopia, the uh, security apparatus uh, in the past two and a half years, the major perpetrators of violence, those that killed and destroyed property, there were 113 acts of incidents, violent incidents, 113, not including the recent ones. What does that mean? Every week, there was preparation for war. The government was to, to, to cry, bury this, and then move on to the next burial service. Uh, it was purposely in an organized manner to stop any acts, uh, any work of development. When all these uh, transpired, when 113 uh, conflicts transpired in, uh, in almost all regions, but the nothing happened in Tigray. They are not even ashamed of this. They said there is nothing going on in our region. Some external people, they say, they say only peace exists only in Tigray region. It's true, but uh, because the, the, the perpetrators uh, are there themselves. So the wounds, uh, they, they, they stir up wounds everywhere, created conflicts between people. It, it involved finance, training, uh, dispatches, and the media is also there. And the media says uh, uh, they speak in advance. Oromo killed Amaras in this and that, both in ordinary med media and social media, and some uh, uh, gullible people uh, believe that and, and involved in further bloodshed acts. So to create uh, ethnic conflicts and religious conflicts, they have done the, their level best. Uh, have they, they succeeded? People have died, but their, uh, their, their purposes has not been successful. They have uh, created havoc in property, killed innocent civilians, if you consider that success. But not only that, if a, if a person uh, is displaced uh, and, and leaves the country to Kenya, he goes to Kenya, some go to Uganda, some somewhere else, believing that uh, the host country would receive them. But one Gojame, if he, if he says I would go to Ambo, they say if, if the Ambo people are my people, if I get hungry, they would feed, feed me. If I get sick, they would take care of me. That's why they goes there. If they, if they don't have the site trust, they would not go there in the first place. So people that have gone there, lived together for centuries, lived together, intermarried, have been together, hair up and down together, these evil forces uh, incited uh, uh, conflicts and fear among these groups of people in the past two and a half years in Oromia. Th there were 37 conflicts and Shashanane, Guluso, Bale uh, was religious and also Harage, Gujolaga, Chenaksan, and also in other places in the past, in these 37 conflicts, 
those that suffered Amharas and other ethnic groups are there. There are many Oromos that uh, their families were dismantled, father died, mother died, wife died. So this was the making Oromia a center of conflict and confusion and creating conflict between Oromo and other people groups and trying to bring religious conflict and but they claim that uh, we uh, we fight uh, for the sake of Oromos and in 37 conflicts when you look at the data many Oromo mama uh, has been left without a husband or without a, uh, a father Oromo uh, has been made to fight against uh, people that lived. Uh, this is a loss for Oromo, for Amara. It's a loss for the entire country. If anybody is to benefit from this, this is this evil force. In Amara region, uh, there, there had been 23 conflicts. In Kamata at Aye, Oromia Special Force, and also in Mota, that was religious conflict. Uh, by the way, I would come back to it later. At every region, uh, with those ethnic groups within the country and also with regional uh, uh, states. And sometimes, even with uh, other countries, uh, attempts have been uh, made to create conflicts. The same in Amara. Many have died. For instance, in Kamant, when you look at it, as you might all know, in Amara region, around Gondar. Uh, there is this uh, tradition of intermarriage, living together with uh, ethnic groups. There are a lot of Eritreans, Tigrans, Oromos, and Kamans. Many people have intermarried. That's the city and the region, the area, rather. Kamant and Amara, it's hardly difficult, uh, possible to differentiate them and at um, Amara leadership. Quite a number of them, their wives are Kamants. Their children are half Kamant and uh, half Amara. It's one family, one language, one culture, one tradition. They don't have any problem, but this conflict has been sponsored so that there will not be peace in Amhara. There will be ethnic conflict within the region, and many have died uh, and suffered destruction. And Benishangul, there were 15 conflicts Matakal, uh, around Asosa, both from Amara and Oromia. There was lots of displacements, Dangu. As you all hear, like a farmer, he goes to his land and it's he become a common news. In Addis Ababa, there were 14 conflicts. What uh, surprises me from among the conflicts is uh, the, the killing of artist Ajalu Fundesa. The assassination of Ajalu Fundesa. Uh, there were uh, uh, among 10 uh, people as assigned already for assassinations uh, from uh, 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 Prosperity Party and renowned people were already marked for assassinations, first from Oria region and then from Amhara regions, killing authorities to make it look like there is a conflict between Amara and Oromo. A lot of work had gone into that uh, with lost Ajalu. And, uh, and we were able to avert uh, further assassinations. What surprises me about Ajalu is a couple of years ago, there was an issue. Why, why did Ajalu Hundensa had a, uh, a viewing on Oromo TV? We faced a lot of criticisms from them. They themselves now were the first ones to announce uh, uh, the, the Oromo liberation fighter Ajalu was assassinated. You know what transpired after that. In Gambela, there were seven uh, conflicts uh, uh, and the camps also, refugee camps, there was conflicts. And in the, in the north, as you know, the case of Gedio, Kuraverta, Konso, Mizantepi, in other parts also. Especially in Gedio. Between Gideon Guji, Gideon Guji, 
and uh, at every measurement you can say it's one family but they created conflict hatred animosity in southern part a lot of people have uh, been damaged other ethnic people that came to their own people have been killed in Jijiga in Afa in connection with Essa was three conflicts in Dredoa, there was three in Harare, there was two in Sidama, we had two. I've mentioned it earlier. All these being done was not even a single incident in Tigran. In Shiraro, the Kunamas and the Tigrais never fight. It, but in Awasa, Walaita and Sidamans fight. In Europe, there are Europe's, they don't fight with Tigrans, and they should not do that. But in other parts of the country, in various uh, regions, not only that, but region against region, or regional state against regional state. For instance, in Amhara, uh, uh, neighbors with Benchangu, there was clashes. There was with Oromia, there was clash. With Afa, there was clashes. In Tigray, they, there was no conflict there. Afa, uh, borders with Oromia, there were conflicts, borders with Somalia, there were, there was, there were conflicts with Amara also, there were conflicts, uh, but uh, there was a border with Tigray, but there was no conflict. The incident in Afa would be uh, worth noting here. There was a conflict between Afar and Somali. So the regions of the two, the, the leaders of the two regions, we call them. Uh, so the president of Afa, Honorable Ato Arbuan, he, he, he said something of uh, great. He said, uh, uh, Afar and Somali, we had conflicts all along. It's not something new. But the, but the current one, do you think the conflict is actually between Afar and Somali? When I asked to elaborate, uh, they said, in this conflict, women are dying. Uh, Afar and Somalis never killed uh, women. This is something new, he said. And secondly, he said, Afar and Somali, they fight during the night, never fight during night. They, they do it only night. But this is involves a fight during the night also. And thirdly, Afar in Somali, they uh, blatantly, they speak and fight in, um, the with no coverings and with no masks, but now it's situ the situation is different. So the defense forces, we gave instructions uh, that federal police uh, the, and the federal army should remove, and then we, we decided to send in a, a federal a special force to Republican. We, we gave them uh, uh, commands to shoot at any other force around. So we, 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 we gave uh, commands for all other forces to leave. After that, it was quiet, total quiet. Not a no, not, uh, noise. We cannot remove uh, the defense forces from everywhere where, where the, uh, there's a presence of uh, defense forces. And here, w w w there was something that is very sad. Our situation in Sudan, as I repeatedly said, uh, the, the Sudanese people have done a lot of good. So, some people went to Sudan. They said, you now the, the, the door is open and you can fight. People say that from here. But the government of Sudan said, I will not use force, uh, force but I would go the legal way. Supports Mogadishu, and so they were trying to make us get in fight to Somalia as well. The same happened in South Sudan also. It didn't end within the country. Following that, the army of the commando, where Armadin came to the palace, you remember that time, around 200 forces. From the time they came to the time they surrounded the palace, we'd never had information. So, causing disputes between people, 
was not enough, so they had to come here. They came to the compound. That also was futile. Illegal movement of arms and money took place widespread in this orchestrations get out of religion, people, and ethnicity, and entered into prosperity. And the people who give their life for the reform also said, let's get into an agreement with these people because we can't handle them. They said, this reform is, will not be success, and said, let's agree with them. But I said, we can't agree with the devil unless you identify them. The power within us was dismantled. The opposition got in a different opinion. The people attitude changed. Many fingers were pointed towards us. And they started saying, the previous government is good. You need a strong government. They started campaigning that. The people of Tigray was made not to get closer with its neighbors. So they were saying the federal government, the Amara, and so on, are going to kill you. They were playing with their minds. The general Ethiopian people were suspicious. They were never trusted coming back home. They were filled with fear. The government was surrounded with agendas aimed at reversing the reform. They created multifaceted activities. As I have said earlier, the security service reform, especially the army, was very important. If we change that, of course, the conflicts here and there will continue. And we said the reform is important to change this for once and for all. So three level change took place, higher level, middle level, and lower level. The higher level administration, starting from the general to a commander, to a captain, around 55% was reduced to 26%. Before this conflict, 26% of higher uh, officials were from Tigray. The number was enormous, but there needed to be, or we had a feeling that equal share should exist within the army. We said, let's reform it. We were not saying we don't need Tigray in the army. After making that 26%, we reduced from the total to 25. What the people should understand is that until the time of the reform, Major General was the highest rank for Southern people representatives. Around 50% of the Souths got Lieutenant General, around 50% after the reform. Why? Because 25 from Souths, from Oromo, and from Amara. If something happens, we would open the room for all to be capable. So we made a room for that because we think there are people capable. It wasn't an issue of capacity. They have proved that during this time also. The mechanized division also required professionalism. So we have 50% to grow right now from 100. It wasn't easy to simply change it. The troops subdivision from 80 to 40 percent, mechanized division from 80 to 44, the troops to 40 percent. We've managed to make it around 50 percent, staffs to 25 percent, and also training to 25 percent. This was the higher level uh, readjustment. Amara, Tigray, South, 
were also incorporated. Those people who were removed and also at a higher level, at a higher rank, were never retired before their time reached. Previously, our Vaut Adasa and Baj Adabale were Lieutenant General at the time, so they were removed previously. But we didn't make the same mistake. We retired only people who reached the age of retirement and said we have to stand firm to that position. The second regiment was the middle level administration. The captains had a, there was a lot of problem at the rank of captain. The general is a political assignment. A colonel can be a general in six months, in a year sometimes. But a captain, unless he makes extra, extra activities, he will not become a general. If we remove them, of course, it will be a problem for the country because the country got into these problems because of the reforms we did in the army. When we make these reforms, the forces that come out of here have their own buildings in the city, and after retirement, they started assembling their own army. So if we remove the middle administration, definitely they will go there and build their own army and make us vacant. So we said it will make us weak and make the other party strong. Since it's a carrier, if they leave here, they will go somewhere. So it needs years. The third is the lower level administration. In the past one and a half year, two years, the trainings given by the government and discussions never took place in the army. The change in the strategy, making it the army of Ethiopia and to be governed by the constitution and by the people of Ethiopia, to not be the army of prosperity. If it becomes the army of the prosperity, it will be definitely a problem. They had questions of salary, uniform. We tried to fulfill those and prepare the lower level. It was impossible to complete it in two years. It needed time because it requires time. We were unable to leapfrog. The second problem is any discussions we are having within the council or anywhere would reach the junta and the junta would start its own discussion. The authority was not as it was before. We couldn't assemble and discuss at night and decide in the morning. So it was fruitless. And therefore, if the livelihood of Ethiopia and its people is at stake, after dividing the three administrations within the army, we had secret divisions also. The first one was the Republican Guard. The Republican Guard, as it stands today, completed its mission. We don't need it anymore. It can be a member of the army. We decided to have a special for, uh, force to do a surgery, to do operations. So we trained highly qualified special forces. That was what we tried to do. If there comes a problem, they will be there to solve it. And two, it was the Air Force. We had to revitalize the Air Force. It required technology, and especially uh, we needed drones and UAVs, and 
We did multifaceted activities in that regard. We didn't allow them to see the types and models. It was a secret reform when the special force were showing activities. They were looking at them, but they don't know their capabilities. They know few information, but they don't understand the entire operation. A few days before uh, the war, some people visited the army. Some of you asked, why are they showing us the army? We wanted to show them that the Air Force is as you know it. We didn't want them to know what we prepared for them. So when they saw the Air Force and the army, they said, there is no preparation, so we're OK. Regarding the drone, we heard several news. You can go and see it for yourself. We planned it for years. It's a capacity build for years. But regarding the drone, the Junta power, there it was not hidden from them. I didn't hide it from them. We will get into a modern fight. And I told them, we have this equipment, so don't get into a fight. But they did not believe me because it was impossible for them to see it within their network. So they didn't accept it. But this power, this force, left Mekale and assembling around Agara Salam. What I want them to hear is that last night, around midnight, we've heard several problems in Abiyadi and Agara Salam. We have seen their activities live. We didn't attack them at night because on retreat, they took their children and their wives with them. They took members of our troop as well. There were several disturbances within the people. We saw it, we didn't attack, and we came back. But this will not continue. The second one is related to civilians. What really surprises me is that is the Air Force and the Special Force in general, the Ministry of Defense, the Honorable House. One thing I want you to understand is that when a MiG goes to the other side, it will be the responsibility of the captain to control the navigation and for the execution. It wasn't like that. It's not like that uh, with the drone. The drone, every direction, every target is inputted. And every target is signed and approved. The Honorable House can see that. Every missile launched is backed by a signature of an authority. 99% hit their target, 99% did not have collateral. When it was suspicious, we don't fire, especially at night, because we don't want to kill children. They're ours. Between the Special Force and the Air Force, the capacity created was unassumed by the enemy. They assume drone for firing, but we're using drones to surveil, to monitor their activities. We're watching them day and night. In relation to civilian damage, we made sure extra caution is taken. Under no circumstances in three weeks in Humara, in Dansha, Shirare, Adagara, Adualala, Adnabid, Adalom, Shere, Sadatnaka, Aksum, Adwa, Adigrat, Zalambasa, Makale. Not even a single person was killed in these cities. No country's army can show such a performance. Our army is disciplined and victorious. 
They said he will destroy Makale and so on. Makale is ours. It was built with our own resources. We're not going to destroy it. Not even a single person was affected, damaged by the operation in Makale. But there are questions raised. Why are you using special force? Why are you using air force? Why were you not working on the mechanized forces? People definitely ask. It's easy to ask. But doing it is difficult. We couldn't use mechanized forces because it requires money. Do you know how expensive a tank is? We cannot invest that much resource at this time. However, the missile the Junta is using, the one it stole from the army, the rockets, we have double, triple that amount, that capacity. But they don't know we have the same capacity because it has to do with intelligence. You didn't launch a single rocket to Tigray. Why are we sending rockets to? It's something that travels in kilometers and falls somewhere. We don't even know who it's going to affect. Our pilots, if they see civilians in the area, they come back without attacking. We decide after surveilling using our drones. But rockets are very dangerous. Even though we have better capacity, we won't use it. We're not the junta. We have responsibilities. We conduct ourselves responsibly. So the problem was mechanized was money. The second problem is, and also what I want the people to understand in the house to also take into account, is that most of us fight on Facebook. In the past year and a half, we wanted to open the army, let alone the other regions from Amara and Oromo from these two big regions. It was difficult to even get 1,000 people. No one wants to be part of the army, but will question whether we are protecting the country or not. This only serves a purpose for Facebook. There was no need to be recruited. There was no desire to be part. If a youth becomes part of the army, it will make him full person. In many countries, people serve before they join the labor force. When you recruit someone to the army, out of a million, hundred million people, it was difficult to find 5,000 people. The people of Ethiopia should think about this. It's very dangerous. Member of the army means a person who says, I'll serve my country even if you deny him food for five days. An army means a person who doesn't have a house to run his family, who gives his life for his country. The preparedness of the people, the Ethiopian people, was very, very low in terms of that. You need to take this into consideration. We can only succeed if you agree to participate. That's the only way we can protect our country. The other one is the diaspora. The diaspora, as you know, they love their country. When something happens, they'll be pissed. They go out on campaigns. But the diaspora we're also supporting the junta in finance. Several times we said, this power or this force was getting more foreign currency more than the government. They were giving weapons with which their brothers were killed. We know that when a money comes into the country in an illegal means, there are benefits, there are profits, but it might kill your brother, your own brother. We can make it legal and we can find ways of adjusting, but it should not be used 
for the enemies, for illegal groups, so it kills our citizen. So we have to uh, watch ourselves in that regard. Notwithstanding this, the SSR reform, the security service reform, however developed it is, unless we do reform in other sectors, we will not have a comprehensive peace in the country. The first one is political reform. Setting aside the army in the politics, if EPRD fails, there was a notion, a negative notion that Ethiopia will be dismantled. A country that was formed a year ago cannot be trusted to carry the country all in all. That was the assumption within the party. There is no country if we don't exist. In relation to that, when we enter into a party reform, when people say TPLF left when prosperity was created, that's wrong. When we went to our ASA, TPLF Central Committee have had a discussion and said we'll not go to our ASA and take part in the discussion, we knew there was that cult. We have had the information. Some of them that made it to the meeting said, we'll get information, we'll cause disturbance within them, and said it's better to dismantle them than not to go. So they joined us in Awasa. The PRDF Council in Awasa was full of debates. Some of them sir, were saying, let's accept Algiers agreement, let's give the land to Eritrea. And the decision was made unanimously, including their members. The head of the intelligence also was voting for that. It was also deliberated here in the House, but after making the decision, he made sure it's not executed. There were three fronts. The first front, when we started the meeting, there were uh, groups that were insulting, making it more of a debate. They were assigned for that strategic purpose. And the second ones were that opposed them and acted like they were supporting and the third group were trying to mediate. This was designed, they deliberated on it, and they assigned people for that activity also. That party that was raising hand and supporting us would leave the room and then uh, say something different on the media. And the people insulting within the discussion, you'll not see them outside in public. This is an old strategy. They were using this in the past as well. We knew about it, so it didn't affect us as much. But the assemblies, the discussions were made, uh, were affected by these activities. They were trying to disclose the discussions of the party, opposing activities, hiding criminals, when we said let's have institutional capacity for Ethiopia, they were saying how is Afar and Somali having equal voices the same as ours, they were raising this type of uh, ideas. The politics of Ethiopia in terms of the ruling party, their loss for them was the establishment of prosperity. It was a victory. Uh, perhaps they said prosperity is unitary and so on. It's not a unitary government. Prosperity stands for federalism. Prosperity believes that all nations and nationalities are respected for their languages and ethnicity. It doesn't discriminate between groups 
it doesn't discriminate against languages. This is not what we fought for. This is why we want to create an institutions whereby all people take part. This forces said, how is a terrorist group coming into the country? They kept saying that for a while, but later they created a federalist group with the terrorists. When we said, let's have them come to the country, they debated. But later they became friends and tried to create a federalist group. This reform in the party and the activities of the PLF Junta came from Kuomintang and the China Liberation Party and they were bringing freedom to the country. They created Taiwan. They've had economy, power. Kuomintang had one advantage. Taiwan had a cost. All members, including the parliament, went there. And I told them, cessation is not good for you. It will not benefit you. You can only benefit when you align with Ethiopia. Don't even think about it. The experiences of A, B, C were disastrous. And I said, like commenting, the old ideology, and they tried to operate in a political way, uh, taking that into consideration. The economy was slowed down. There was microeconomic imbalance, unemployment, our projects, the small or large ones, they were halted because of corruption. We were having difficulty paying salaries and loans outside of the problems I mentioned to you earlier. Without having these reforms, whatever we do for the army, it will be disintegrated. So the economy required a reform. So there, was a, there were a lot of reforms in the economy. And the major problem we faced later on was changing our currency. When the time comes for that, the reform was coming to success and the world was looking at Ethiopia in terms of the success in the economy. They were seeing that we are able to execute I will not divulge into it for the sake of time, but see government enterprises, the bank sectors, like the army, were surrounded for destruction, sorry, to extract resources. The format in the army and the intelligence existed in the telecom, in ELPA, sugar, and so on. I will not divulge into those, but the economic reform was very critical. The third critical area that needed reform was legal reform. Regarding the law, they were suppressing laws in the country that narrowed the political platform that we opposed. We divided this into three. The first one was suppressing laws that narrowed the political reform needed revisions, the CSO organizations, proclamations needed to be loosened, perhaps several NGOs were undertaking other activities outside of their mainstream job. We will solve those as we go, but it was one of the proclamations uh, that needed to be changed. The second one is electoral board revision proclamation. It needed to stand out as an independent democratic institution, trusted and organized so that it can perform its activities aligned with the constitution. But it was also suppressed by a proclamation and we undertook the activities you know. The third one is electoral law. The parties, rules, and so on, and how we operate, the procedures. 
So there was a legal reform in that as well. The, sec the, sec the other one is Human Rights Commission. As you know, our cadres controlled it. After the reform, we strengthened the institution. Increased, but comparatively, it's a liberal free institution. The other one, uh, sub submersive ball, is the, uh, the anti uh, terrorist law, was very disruptive and uh, came up with improvement. The worst one is that of a uh, uh, treason administration law. Uh, after a person is uh, indicted, uh, there were all sorts of uh, uh, beatings, uh, um, uh, dark rooms, uh, uh, unknown uh, prison places uh, who, who were against human rights, and that uh, punishment cannot involve uh, depriving food, uh, depriving TV, that uh, their human rights would be supported and budget has been allotted to that uh, and also the media law that you know prior to change uh, the website and blockers more than 80 280 were blocked the conventional media were being jumped if that was not the case uh, dishes would be uh, put in place uh, and destroyed dishes but uh, but we, we change that uh, abuses uh, we, we can come up with improvements uh, uh, along the way but we took care of this uh, submissive uh, suppressive sorry laws uh, and the cabinet was engaged in work from Monday to Friday meetings were uh, held on Saturdays uh, this is uh, something new we wanted to take more time to work because there was a lot of accumulated things to take care of apart from these uh, uh, suppressive laws uh, the, the, uh, there are other laws also the, the trade law mediation laws we, we took the, we, we have uh, assigned the, 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 the UN law, so we, we wanted to come up with a law that incorporated mediation, and uh, this would be of great uh, use in the economic arena also, and also to make Ethiopia conducive for international trade, they had their own positive contributions therein. And thirdly, uh, great documents that stayed there for 60 years, laws that were in place for 60 years, that, that uh, came from the time of the king. Uh, reform works uh, has been done, uh, criminal law, penal law procedure. Uh, it was there for 60 years, it's a big document. It has not been uh, touched upon uh, for 60 years, but uh, that work has been done. Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, trade law, uh, Procedural laws, uh, uh, all sorts of laws have been uh, gone through reforms, and also we, we had political reforms, economic reforms, and also law enforcement uh, also underwent reforms. And the third crit the fifth critical area is diplomacy. When we come to diplomacy, we had two problems. One is uh, Ethiopia is a, is, a, is a country without a port. Secondly, the geopolitics, the forces that want to uh, weaken Ethiopia, they are still active and they were there in history. If we don't work in close uh, contact with our neighbors, and that was proved uh, if we had not uh, made peace with Eritrea, you know what could have happened these days. The, our reconciliation is a matter of individuals, but that of people. The, uh, more than uh, Eritrea government, the Eritrea people has demonstrated this, this clearly. I would come back to this uh, later when we go to Somali. They said, we, we don't trust you because it's you who create division. It's your, co it's, it's, it's your government that's creating how we hate you, they said. 
they, they say this blatantly, openly. When we go to South Sudan, they said it's it's you who created division and conflict in our eyes. They said you gave so you must have been created havoc and division between the two of us. It's you. And everybody hates Ethiopia as a neighbor. The parliament needs to know this. So this internal division has also gone abroad, be it ethnic and otherwise. So they were uh, had a Hubbard hate thread against us and to uh, change these and to come up with a positive uh, relationship with our neighbors countries. Uh, uh, and then we should give priority to the dignity of the citizens. Uh, that's the way we went about it. The first issue was that of Eritrea. We decided together to this the decision was not uh, from uh, prosperity. It's the junta that uh, uh, decided this. They said, let's recognize the Algiers uh, uh, agreement. But, but to stop the reconciliation, there is nothing that they have uh, not attempted. The decision was there, common decision. Uh, they say sometimes they say it's individuals coming together and this and that, but now the junta has uh, uh, dehumanized uh, uh, the uh, Ethiopian forces, sent them uh, without clothes. The, the Eritrean people gave them clothes, they gave them food. The Ethiopian people must know and must honor this. The Eritrea people is not just a brother people, but a, a friend in difficult situation. When the operation was being carried on, the people we met in uh, prisons, they are very in a bad situation. But those that fled Ethiopia to Eritrea, they get strong and came back to fight for their country. Those that deny that food, food and water are our own people. Those that were sent without any cloth, they were sent to Eritrea. That's why they came with Eritrean uh, attire. So in this operation, for the people of Eritrea, for the government and people of Eritrea, for the people in government of Djibouti and Somalia and Kenya people and, uh, and government, the South Sudan people and government, I extend uh, great appreciation and thanksgiving. Everybody helped us. Sudan, as usual, stood with us gave us great support, Eritrea, Djibouti, Kenya, Sudan, the same. Our neighbor countries, we needed them. We would continue to work together in a spirit of brotherhood. We need them. In connection with this, uh, the, the northern division attack, now that we know the background that I just relayed, the, the, this junta, they, they gave us, they insulted us, we didn't respond. They conspired all sorts of economic and other conspirations, we, we kept quiet. They created havoc here and there, we kept quiet. They, 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 they conducted illegal elections, they expected uh, war, we didn't do anything. All sorts of political incitements, we kept our cool. It's then we went to attack before we go there, the, the Northern Division and all other divisions combined together would not amount the Northern Division, be it uh, military capacity-wise, armament-wise, the, the, the military depot is in Tigray. We don't even have a single bullet here. The rockets, missiles, all of it are in Tigray region. The missile operators are from one region. To bring that rocket, there was a lot of attempt done. Uh, we, we gathered them and we tried to negotiate with them. We should remove the rockets, but they would tell the junta, and the next day they would close the door with women and children. They said the, ar the armament is not going to move there. They said with the pre pretext that Eritreans would fight against us, but, uh, uh, but they were getting ready for uh, another war. So we had to uh, do uh, whatever 
We could, but we, we could not remove the, 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 the rockets. We asked for the keys, the starters. They, they brought us the key. But they're still using the rockets. By the way, our defense force, the armaments, the mechanized, for years was purposely made to gather in that region. They wanted to collect forces in that particular place. This is an open knowledge. The tanks are there. All sorts of armaments are there. Even the Ethiopian uh, depot or oil depot is there. So when we talk of mobili mobility, the army c could not do anything. We cannot replace that by new purchases for the lack of uh, money. So with the special force, air force and rockets, there was a lot of work done. You, you accuse us uh, not acting uh, in time, but we needed even more time. Uh, because to, to come up with commanders, uh, we cannot just assign. It's a career that requires time to develop. Having done that, uh, keeping all our moments, what led us to, to make preparation is when we had a conflict in other uh, parts, uh, not thinking that there would be traitors to such a, uh, an extent, we asked that some of the part, uh, the army and the armaments should come to help. They said, no, the army is not going and the armament is not going. They're actually sending forces against us, encouraging other forces to come and fight us. This is what they've been doing. And then on that particular night uh, at 11 uh, p.m., this junta, uh, d disruptive communication from Addis Ababa. They stopped power, electric power, and uh, telephone uh, communication. So they gathered in 50, 60, so that they, they would not communicate with one another. They, they gathered, they rounded up with the militia, and they sent elders for those who refused to, co to cooperate. Uh, uh, very disgraceful uh, 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 acts of uh, terrorism and violence. They killed many, they took many captive. Those who were killed, they were tied with ropes and they were totally naked, the bodies. Uh, by the way, body, a body, a dead body has no race. It's when, the, when life is there uh, that uh, we talk of ethnicity. Uh, uh, a dead body does not have any language, just a, a body. Uh, but to think that uh, an, uh, a dead body is an oromo and a tigre, it's uh, inhuman. Okay, kill them, but not burying them, it's uh, uh, shameful. May the loner army that fought for you and did a lot of good on your behalf. So arrogance, pride is bad. Is it, it brings about destruction, and it, it has a blinding force. If we have this uh, uh, power and, and these armaments, that's the way that that's the reason that led them to act like this. Before this, they have openly said, if we don't do what we tell you to do, we would create havoc. Not only in Ethiopia, in East Africa. This is nothing. Uh, this is nothing. They don't say this in secret. They, they speak this to diplomats, and the diplomats get uh, afraid. They said, if you touch them, they would uh, disrupt the peace of uh, the area. What is very sad about this is an, an old ape uh, wants to jump like a young one and it gets into trouble. These people have no knowledge of uh, military science at all whatsoever. They just have old mentality, be it economic or, mil or military. Let me give you two examples for this. In the American Civil War, the thing that American Civil War created was in the southern part of uh, the U.S. and the north there was a conflict uh, around uh, uh, slavery. Abraham Lincoln wanted to demolish slavery 
and also in the south uh, with uh, uh, huge uh, plantations. They wanted to continue with the system. So General Jeffers, uh, uh, Jefferson Davis, uh, who was a graduate of War Academy in the U.S., yeah, he, he became a chief of staff in the south, and uh, they said we have seceded, and we said they said they don't respect Abraham uh, Lincoln. That was the campaign. Abraham Lincoln, just uh, like us, he begged for years and took the situation in a lot of patience. But one uh, night, just like in what happened in Ethiopia, in South Carolina, Carolina a mechanized army, they attacked it during the night. That was led by General Davis. They, they stole uh, armaments also. Abraham Lincoln was not prepared for this. That man said, I am a, an army qualified general and nobody can fight the way I do. Abraham Lincoln gathered up militias. The first thing he did was he, he closed the border of the southern border that the southerners would not be able to leave the country. When they attacked the northern division, the first thing he did was he closed the border. Second thing was, just like the American Civil War, I want to tell the Americans that the same uh, struggle that you faced uh, 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 happened in Ethiopia. It took you three and a half years uh, to reunify the two uh, parts of the U.S. because you, con you deemed it unconstitutional. So the same thing happened. As the Constitution was attacked. It didn't take us three years, but only three weeks. If you understood, if you understand that this way, it would be good. The second relationship with what happened in the U.S. was in the Second World War. The, uh, the Japanese attacked the American army at the Pearl Harbor unexpectedly, just like what happened in Tigray. The American parliament decided to defend itself. Uh, it used uh, even a nuclear bomb against Japan and totally destroyed Japan. As you know, in the, uh, the American Civil War, uh, the arrogance of General Dev uh, Jefferson, even 20 years after the war, the southern part of uh, uh, the U.S. took uh, more than 20 years to be rebuild its community. The keys of Japan in the Second World War, the leader of the war, uh, General MacArthur, four-star four star MacArthur, after defeating the and winning the battle in Tokyo, the only part that was remaining standing is the American camp military. Apart from that, all the infrastructure was totally demolished. But not only that, up until today, because of uh, what happened then, the generations uh, after generations are suffering, had all sorts of sicknesses. It's open knowledge. So this uh, age-old mentality is uh, what this Jonta had in mind when it attacked uh, the, the northern division. Uh, this uh, certain individual uh, told us the story. He, uh, he said uh, it was an attack, swift attack, like a lightning. They openly declared that. The, 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 the leaders of the region said the, the northern uh, uh, force is with us, but the northern forces for 20 years, they fought with the Eritreans. Not only that, but for 20 years, it protected the region against further attack. If the northern uh, division is with them, then it's, it's a lost case. The, the force is there, the people is there. And one media they say they are with us, and the second day they say they fought against us. All sorts of conflicting reports. Killing uh, 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 civilians. How can you describe the situation that happened in my country? These are totally unarmed civilians, They're just daily laborers. 
You got that down. Up. Daily laborers. And kill them in mass. This is political uh, destruction and moral uh, deprivation. It's terrible. Within the military and also in the civilians. Not only, by the way, it's not only in military, but in Shire, we have uh, camps for refugees. They have also imprisoned people from there. You've heard what they did in universities. The purpose was to hit the, sun, uh, the, the northern division and also the second day take Gondar and Waldia captive and uh, using their agents in Addis Ababa. Uh, use destruction in Adama, in Addis Ababa with bombs. And those in Addis Ababa, they were ready to act for them. So the, the first work was to prevent any attack any attack against Gondor and Waldia. So the second day, we came up with a, a, a law of state of emergency, came up with one command center, so Oromia special forces uh, had, had to cover for the defense force because the defense force had to relocate to north. So there was a, a, a lot of uh, attacks by the Oromia special forces defending uh, the country against uh, anti-peace forces and the Amahara uh, special forces until the defense force uh, comes to help. They fought fiercely defending themselves and the region and they stopped the uh, progress of the enemy in the, in the Nishango, special forces and the federal police worked together and handled the situation there. The federal police uh, were uh, dismantling forces that wanted to create havoc in the city. All these require a great honor, especially that of defense force, honorable parliament. In many countries, uh, with uniforms, when they stand for taxis, they give them uh, preference. In the airports, they give them preference because they respect the uniform, because in time of uh, difficulty, it's quite costly. We don't really give them salaries. But as a nation, we should give honor to soldiers recognizing that they pay the highest price for their country. Otherwise, Ethiopians have many enemies. When you stop this, the other one comes out. If you want this country to continue, you need to honor the defense forces. So we have to engage in the military and honor the military at the same time. It's this way that we can defend further attacks concerning uh, the, the, the battle. The first work that we engaged in was to stop them from encroaching Gondor and Goja. And uh, uh, there was a part of an army that we wanted them to flee to Eritrea, but communication was an issue. But we tried to communicate on the command so that they would flee to Eritrea. We don't know how many have uh, fled there because they have not received the command properly. The Northern Division Head, uh, what I want the Parliament to know, General Dereba, Head of the Northern Division, 15 days ahead of the, the war, he sat uh, with a meeting there after they had lunch. He, he became ill, sick, now uh, became unconscious. Uh, he was hospitalized. And some say he was poisoned. 
When we said Bishara. And we said, no, let it be confirmed now. We didn't want the news to come out. General Dereba, up until this moment, is not in a position to resume work. When he became sick, we, we wanted to replace him. That's why. But that was purposely done and refusing the new leadership that we have uh, conspired other moves. So we assigned another person to, to replace him. They, were, he, they sent him back. So they, they uh, take uh, captive the deputy leader and they broke communication. You and me know the story. So our first move was to stop their move towards Gondor and, uh, and, Bah and, and Bajam. That was on Tuesday. So we began defense work on, on Wednesday. We, we started to gather up our forces. After one, two days, we organized ourselves. And we tried to, uh, to close the borders. When we did that, the, the force that fled to Eritrea, we wanted to know how many of our forces are in Eritrea. I, 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 I went there taking three generals. The reason we did that was we wanted to see the situation of our army and to design a plan when we went there. What we saw was very tragic. General Ababautadese is an army is a, is an army that he led uh, for many years. So when he saw that they saw the general, they began uh, uh, crying. The, the general said, "I'm not coming back with you. I will stay with the army." General Getacho Gujina, uh, it's his own army. It's his children that have been killed. He, he, he cried there. He says, "I'm not coming up with the general Baj Adabali." The three of them went with me. The, the army was had its spirit on. As, as some of it, I would uh, tell you later. They were still with their uh, guns. Some of them, they are, they, they are even apprehended uh, uh, arms, and some were totally naked. Some were very tired. So the question was, uh, let's take us back in. We want to fight this junta. So after uh, uh, doing situational analysis, uh, we, we, we came up with new organization. But the enemy thought that the, that part was already dismantled. We assigned leaders and began to organize ourselves concerning the rockets. As I've mentioned earlier, uh, our uh, rockets are there, 100 percent, and uh, they are all from that part of Ethiopia. We wanted to bring the, the arms there, uh, but we did not uh, succeed. But now, uh, recognizing that these rockets would be deadly, let's destroy the rockets. And when we, we had information, one of uh, one of it was. The rocket in Makale that can be reached 300 kilometers. The rocket is there, and they can use it. The rocket is in the city, and uh, the, the, uh, the item they need to use it is out of uh, Makale, and the less powerful one is in Adwa and Metik. So we, we discussed and uh, had a debate, a discussion, let's hit it or not. There was a lot of debate. Our honorable Parliament must know the missiles that was uh, uh, in, in Makale. If we hit it, it can destroy the whole city. We cannot be sure of the outcomes. Some, some technical people say it could not be destructive. Some technical people say no, it could prove to be costly. It was risky. So uh, the, the item that couldn't trigger uh, the, the rockets were out of uh, Tigray. But in Adwa, the rockets are in Metic. If we if we destroy that, it would destroy the city. So we didn't want to go into such a risk.
ሮኬቱን ካደረጉ በኋላ ሌክ የተከተለው አካሄድ ሳይው የተከላከሉ ኃይሎች እጃቸውን ከዚህ ነገር groups that were defending without knowing we gave them a chance to give in to stop wires in the urban to protect our citizens from the consequences and also to make sure the conflict the war ends very soon and also to deteriorate the capacity of the enemy to defend itself the force of the junta uh, disregarding humara took him could took it 15 years to get to makale they've been able to do that in 15 days they walked we walked the victorious defense force from the tip of gondar to shurre walked they didn't use cars some of you said we delayed but they walked the road is tiring you won't even drive a land cruiser it's really tiring they walked in order to do this our strategy i'll explain it in detail so you know the truth general balai the victorious general masala did the first defense on the side of gondar and also the occupation of umara together with their counterparts satanao balai and victorious masala are the children of ethiopia they never had a consultant they never had the different force but they walked in our general in the west assembled the army first controlled our trenches we don't know them in detail if you know nagahalo badme biara it controlled these places and controlled Sheraro and this was the mission given to General Abao General Balai uh, controlled Sheraro and crossed Takaze and joined General Abao's forces Abao controlled Sheraro Humara was Humara was controlled by Balai and Masela these forces combined controlled Sheraro and Aksum between Rama and the area and the conflicts that took place General Bacha organized the forces the mission given to Bacha was to control Techo area and to cut on Adwa on the side of Zalambasa before controlling it General Bacha was given a mission Sorana uh, to organize forces to start attacking when it's given orders from the side of Zalambasa General Tacho organized the forces and was victorious in Zelius motion controlled Zalambasa that was the mission given to him, to him. When the other forces reached Sheraro, the other forces were strong enough and to reach at their places because we assembled forces in different locations. From the east, especially uh, in organizing heavy artilleries, General Alamishet was in command. Together with him, General Salamon and General Zaudu were together. This was not a permanent assignment. However, we started this way. There were shifts. When we wanted them in different fronts, we were reshuffling them. 
the choice based on an understanding of each mountain, the height, and the passes. General Ababao, in a war between Eritrea, knows every detail in the area, the terrain, and General Getacho also understands Salambasa and the area. Therefore, we know that they know it, if not equal, if not better, equally as the enemy. They were able to identify terrains and difficult locations, and we use them for that. General Brahanu Jula, the victorious, had two forces that never left the situation room for 24 hours. This general, he was leading the forces using these forces. General Johannes is amongst them. He doesn't compromise the issue of his country. General Asrat, who reads the map like a ground, General Tasfai, the logistics head, General Abdurrahman, human resource, General Hachalu, General Hassan, who builds the force against the enemy, and others were under the command post in true missions were engaged in the war. One thing I don't want to leave without mentioning here is that one General Yilma, leader of the Air Force, led his victorious team and sacrificed to complete the mission on time. General Shuma and General Brahanu Bakala organized the special forces. The special forces, victoriousness, I will not say much about it. Our authors, our musicians, you have a work to do there. What I call victory would be if we were fighting against any other country, but within it was within ourselves. The ones who died and the ones who killed are, of course, our own. But the special force in Makale made sure we controlled the city without killing a single person. In Humara, it destroyed the trench. Only one person was sacrificed. Unless you make a movie out of it, it's difficult to talk the victoriousness of these people. The special force that went there denied fighting the forces in front of it and infiltrated all the way in and the shots were fired from the back. They finished their bullets after removing the enemies and some of them fought and took guns from the enemies. This is how they completed it in 15 days. A 15 years war in 15 days. Despite the fact that we have to mention a lot of people here, General Girma Kababo, the 7th Brigade Commander, decided not to give in his ammunition and weapons till the last moment and fought with its force and entered Eritrea. And the weapons he couldn't carry, he burned it down. When we went to Eritrea, we didn't expect to see that many weapons. General Mulalem, 5th Brigade, in the area of Humara was fighting until the point possible. Badama, 8th Brigade Commander, General Nasr Abadiga, used all its force till the end and controlled Shiraro. 
we have this kind of incredible people people that don't care much about their lives had Ethiopia not had these children it would have changed where we are right now it would have made our country like other countries the role of the people of Tigray in all this in their victoriousness their love for the country I want the Honorable House to take it into consideration. At the time of the conflict, there was a person who was shot because he denied or he opposed killing of the army. There are Tigrayans who left to Eritrea who didn't want to see the war. There were others who joined the defense force and fought in the war. This is the issue of Ethiopianism vis a vis the junta. When we reached Shirei, we received 200 weapons. When we reached Aksum, 40 injured persons were given to us by the people. We had discussions in Makale yesterday. They said, you are let. Now that you are here, please give us electricity and telecom. We want to get back to our lives. The forces disintegrated into different parts in order to stop them from further actions and attacks. They said, please create a new administration. They received us with warm hands. The army loved its country and didn't cause any destructions. We didn't only fight on the ground. As I've said earlier in the army, when the captain, the commander, and everyone lives who didn't have a commander or a leader. Diplomatic actions were lobbying on the part of the enemy in different parts, in different parts of the world. They were lobbying on the media also. The war was on all fronts. And most of our friends started pressuring us to get into discussions. As this honorable house knows, we love to discuss. We hate war. We know its consequences. We begged until the time they attacked us. But after that, controlling Gondor, Weldia, that was what's left to say. It was not the issue of the army only. When things, when tensions grew, they started resorting politics. And if that's the case, you don't attack the northern division. No country will do this. If the army is attacked in any country, any country will respond furiously. We know diplomacy. Ethiopia is a country that established the United Nations. Ethiopia is a country that established the African Union. You cannot tell us about multilateralism. We're known about by peace in Korea and different parts of Africa. We served for peace. What we want to tell our friends is that if you want to be friends with us, you have to understand us also. We could be poor, but we have years of experience in being a government. More than some of you countries. We've been countries before your countries. We don't confuse a country and a government. We want you to understand that. Not today. Even 100 years ago, we gave our neck to be free from colonialism. 
We don't have to forget that. And the third one is Honorable Speaker of the House his victory is Ethiopia. No individual will sell his or her country for their benefit. We love peace. We work for peace. And you have to understand that. And if you understand what's ours, you should collaborate with us. No matter poverty we are in, we will not give in our pride to others. <laughs> Don't blame us. It's not our fault. This is in our blood, transmitted from our fathers. Well, money will not pressure us. You can only work together with us. You cannot win Ethiopia when you have Ethiopians living here. Today or tomorrow, you can't win as long as Ethiopians live on this land. We don't want you to think that way. You have to listen to us when we try to enforce the law. This is for the good friends. And there are others with hidden agenda. The hidden agenda is, I don't want to mention names, but our neighbors, all of them, have powers of Damaka and powers of Avi. They'll say, Damaka, move your forces here, Damaka, move your forces there. They keep saying, Damaka and Avi are not in agreement, let's have meeting in Kigali, and so on and so on. That's impossible to repeat in Ethiopia. Ethiopia has one government, and that government respects the law, upholds the rule of law, and can be asked according to the law and gives respect to its people as much as possible. It will create a democracy that looks like Ethiopia. We don't want to look like others. We want to look like ourselves. We will not have forces like other countries, competing forces. And those forces or those parties that has this kind of understanding, please drop it. Otherwise, there is no international government that does not understand what we have been doing. You heard my cadre. We heard about my cadre. We heard about our general being taken and corpse left on the streets. With those conditions, we can't have discussions. With who? Perhaps the Honorable House needs to understand the government of Ethiopia has been having discussions even during the time of war. In the past two, three weeks, while we're still into war, we're having dialogues. These dialogues were made with Dr. Mulu, who is the legal authority in Tigray. What will we do in Tigray? The first one is enforce the law. And two, don't fight in the city so the people won't be affected. Citizens will be okay then. And three, start rehabilitating the regions, the cities, as soon as you occupy them. That was the mission given to us. We based on that. We cannot, the fact that we didn't sit and on a dialogue with enemies and with criminals does not make it that we were not interested in a dialogue. Somali and regions also said, we need peace. The fact that they said they need peace is an expression of their interest. It does not, however, mean that when you are attacked, definitely the scenarios will change, the responses will change. There are a lot of pressures, a lot of things are said. It's required its own war, this or that. 
we want you to understand we need peace that if our sovereignty is affected we will act the other one is bringing criminals to court was engaged in terrorism killed and so on different crimes we have to see it in line with the operation the first one and our own first objective is bring those taken and returning the tanks taken from us thousands of injured persons came back we still have forces with them those who are killed we have taken control of our camps and government and institutions for instance after controlling Makale the army said let me start searching we said no the army is only trained to fight not to search so they might cause damages if an army member takes something there it could quarrel our relationship so we'll send trained persons later not even a single defense force entered the city and in fact in the cities they control they haven't done anything that has to do with search and seizure when you reach to Makale an area of Kwe and Najash Bukro, whether you believe it or not, the farmers were harvesting as if nothing happened. They knew it was their own force. There was nothing unique. They knew the propaganda. The second ultimatum was we gave them 272 hours. Why? Why did you extend it? These are the questions raised from people. These had several objectives. The extension had objectives. The first one is when we reached Makale, the force that approached with that power assumed the junta was in Makale. So we needed to slow down and work on the emotions, otherwise, we might regret our actions. They may march in assuming they handled or they are arresting the Junda. Therefore, we needed to have a special plan to avoid damages. The second one, the Junta were destroying wherever they went. So we thought they might even do something in Makale. And the third one is there are several people who doesn't want war at a grassroots level. So we needed to give them time to give in. We knew we could control it, but we wanted a plan. We wanted to calm down. We wanted to have the necessary forces with the necessary responsibilities. That's why we delayed. We said in a short period, and we completed it in a short period. Expediated, it could cause a problem. If we go late, it could also cause damages. So we completed it in time. In fact, the defense force had in its mind that it would complete the operation in two weeks. The government analyzed and extended it after doing analysis because we wanted to avoid distractions. The way forward is arresting criminals from wherever they are. They went to a certain location they have feelings that they can fight but they have to fight within themselves within their own perception of killing looting and causing disagreements between people and the use of Tigray should not be siding with them they can win uh, prosperity if they want not through war but through peace and through election this is why we are only fighting using ballots not bullets But they just said, uh, let's fight, meaning protect us. We don't want to die. Just protect us. But uh, who is naive uh, to die for them to live? If they are really courageous, uh, instead of leaving the people of Makale, they should have fought there themselves. Uh, 
and sacrifice their lives. They leave their fighting for others and they flee for dear life. If the surrender would take them to court, we're following them up, uh, they cannot go far. It's good if they give uh, up themselves, they never die. From uh, Palace, when they leave, they said, they said w w would administer the country from Addis. They said when they left, forget it would be in, in uh, Makale. And now they move to Agar of Salam. And, uh, but that, that, that does not go a long way. So uh, following where it is building Tigray, Tigran people uh, is under ration with lots of difficulties. This ration is getting uh, uh, lower, smaller, sorry. So we need to address this uh, dire economic situations. We need to support them, organize uh, the country concerning uh, refugees. They say some 30,000 people have been uh, have left the country, as uh, the parliament knows. This uh, path of reform, uh, millions of people <laughs> had been displaced and re 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 uh, uh, reorganized, uh, came, uh, brought people back. So we have the experience. Uh, we, there is, we can do this in a week. Uh, the UN, the Sudan government, and our door is open. Let's work together to bring our people back. They are our citizens. But we have one problem. There's no women, there's no children. It's just the young that is it's called the refuge. Who's this? Who are these young people? Then time will tell. Mykandra, if they have a team in Mykandra, and if there is uh, evidence, they will be held uh, legally accountable. They will be innocent citizens. Tomorrow morning, there is a committee set up. We're ready. If the world wants to assist, our doors are open. We don't want our people to leave out of Ethiopia. But 30,000 is not too much because uh, we have uh, dealt with millions of internally displaced people. We know they are some people that want to magnify for political gain in this uh, incident. Political discussion in Tigray with the legal, uh, apart from legal parties from Ararat, uh, Tigray political parties, uh, prosperity party, and other legal entities, apart from them, nobody else can administer the country. Tigray is an honored people, they can't administer themselves now that they are free from the pressure. They, uh, they will uh, conduct uh, an election with its own people and they will have their own self-administration. The junta will be handled by the continuing operation. Even for the junta, I have an advice. Not uh, in order to, to save one or two people, uh, two individuals, all this happened. When it comes to politics, there are 30 or 40 people that you want to appoint. So 30 or 40 people to save their lives, they should not create uh, uh, the destruction of many youth people. They will be held accountable. So a lot of work we need to go into it. And we will continue building, stabilizing, bringing peace. Apart from that, we will work to make sure that the coming uh, election will be democratic. For Ethiopia, democracy is, democracy is the real healing medicine. It has to be accountable, free and fair elections. As per uh, rules and regulations of the electoral board, we, need, oh, we all need to be uh, hold accountable to that. And, uh, and the parliament must do a follow-up and monitoring work towards this and would work for the people of Tigray. It's good that we, we uh, have a very good relationship with our neighbors and this will continue in the future. The people of Ethiopia would galvanize together to rebuild uh, Tigray, ha having assessed the damage uh, the government and the people at large who need to engage in the rebuilding process of Tigray. And lastly, 
foreigners and also for those within the country. So the, message, the message that I have is uh, from uh, uh, out of Ethiopia uh, that want to engage uh, in any uh, 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 collaboration. We are free. But uh, those in a conspiracy and intervene, uh, those forces that want to uh, defeat Ethiopia, let them learn from history. It's impossible but in a peaceful manner, in diplomatic routes, the door is open. That's the message I have for foreigners uh, and uh, for those within the country, the advice that I have concerning the junta. I don't have a personal animosity and hatred to anybody there. It's with the mentality and with the works that I am against. If we remove one junta and come up with another one, it would be a total false loss. It is this junta that created ethnic difference and animosity. If we hate each other on every basis, then we become another junta. So Tigrans, both in Tigray and uh, in other parts of Ethiopia that are not linked with the junta, they are Ethiopians. We need to protect them. We need to honor them. If we don't do that, we just re, uh, we just uh, change the players. That's all we can do. So a, a, lot, a lot of care needs to go into that, be it in uh, defense forces, police, and also other civilian work. Or, I mean, we need to give them protection. I mean, some, some uh, grants uh, have been forced to leave out of their work, and what they themselves need to know and the parliament needs to do is there's a lot of destruction in Tigray, mass killings, and we need to, uh, like uh, army mem members, we need to protect them maybe uh, against any revenge. And a uh, second one is many uh, had a, a role one way or the other in the evil acts perpetrated in the northern part of Ethiopia. So we have to learn from the experience in Mykandra. So because of these two reasons, uh, actions have been made and would continue to look into this situation carefully. Now, winning a battle has its own uh, negative consequences. We have uh, uh, had a, a, a powerful victory, but if it creates pride and, and arrogance on our part, then uh, it would be destructive. No, I believe it is truth that won. It is the prayer and the tears of the mothers of Ethiopia. The rest of us need to be humble. We should not hate. We should not uh, uh, engage in uh, uh, victory songs because the major battle is in front of us. The battle against poverty. If we uh, persist in poverty, we are doomed to engage in other battles in our parts. If the Junta X is uh, demolished, Junta Y will come to pass. If we are to come out of the history of uh, war, we have to forge ahead in speed to our development and prosperity. So this spirit of uh, conviction that Ethiopians showed in this matter must be repeated in the battle to come out of poverty. We, we need to come out of uh, being paupers. We can change ourselves. We have the capacity, we have the clarity in agriculture, industry, in cities. We need to, it's a, it takes a process. Development uh, can be done by Ethiopians themselves. Others can only support. We cannot prosper uh, out of begging. So, so in order to avoid conflicts, ethnic conflicts, we should be ones that are peaceful and in a concerted manner. We need to engage uh, in our path of development and peace. Ethiopian people must cooperate along these lines. Ethiopia would may continue to prosper by the authority of the people and its survival would be uh, maintained, ensured uh, by the concerted efforts of the people. Thank you. I want to thank His Excellency the Prime Minister for the adequate explanations he gave. Let's honorably sit off now. A second meeting. Uh,
extraordinary meetings now adjourned.